he had made uh, the enemy subject unto them. And now they had to decide how they were going to live for God, how they were going to serve God. And we must do the same thing. We must decide. The decision is ours. We make many decisions. Life is full of decisions. Every day we make decisions. Some decisions we make are uh, important decisions uh, and some are not uh, so important. Uh, we, the consequences of some de decisions are very costly and the consequences for some are not. Uh, some, some decisions will cost us our life and, and some decisions will cost us a change in our lives. But the fact remains that uh, when we reach a certain age, every decision that we make is ours. I know we live and we see on television how that individuals become masters at shifting the blame on someone else. If some, something is done, uh, they'll shift the blame. If some uh, type of advantage, they'll take credit. Uh, but please remember, this is from the pulpit to the back door, that every decision we make is our own decision. And we must be responsible for our decisions. And that's one of the things that we have been trying to get across to our young people and equip our parents and grandparents in helping uh, our young people make good decisions, uh, make good decisions re regarding your self-identity, make good re re decisions regarding positioning uh, yourself uh, for power, you know, uh, make good decisions on respecting authority, uh, make good decisions uh, all around in every part of your life. And so um, uh, the uh, we've got to instill in our kids that it's that they are responsible. There's going to come a time when you are responsible for every decision that you make. And the best person to look at who has live the, the the most successful life ever known to man, the most successful human life ever known to man, and that is Jesus. Jesus has lived a very, very successful life. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 2 and verse 22, he did no sin, neither was any guile found in his mouth. Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, but yet without sin. So we can look to Jesus and we can find uh, courses of action through Jesus. We can find principles on which to build. We can find wisdom in difficult times. We can look to Jesus he is our all and all. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse uh, 22, God has put all things under Christ's feet, gave him head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. So he's our all and all. Everything that we need is in Jesus. Everything we need to know, Jesus has uh, the knowledge and the wisdom for us. Everything we need, he can supply our needs. So let's look at Jesus. So this morning uh, in worship, we uh, looked at the fact that Jesus understood his purpose. Jesus understood his purpose. Jesus was purpose driven. We went and showed how that uh, there were some Jews who thought that Jesus was going to come and overthrow the Roman government. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, uh, his disciples said, Will thou at this time, this time uh, uh, restore the kingdom of Israel? And uh, Jesus says, It is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father has put in his power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come, up you, come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So Jesus did not come to restore the kingdom of Israel. He did not come to overthrow the Roman government. Uh, 
even though the people wanted him to do that. And sometimes we get carried away with what people want. People want this, people want that. And so we feel pressured to give them what they want because of our impression, our understanding, or our acceptance of those people. But Jesus stayed focused on his purpose. No matter how much the Jews wanted him to restore the kingdom of Israel, he didn't come for that. And he did not change his purpose. Uh, some of the Jews talked about him because he ate with the publicans and the sinners and so forth. Jesus says, uh, the sick need not a physician. Uh, so Jesus came uh, to call the sinner to repentance. So when you are talking about me regarding the time that I spend with the uh, publicans and sinners, just remember, I'm spending that time in order to fulfill the purpose for which I came. And so uh, Jesus was not uh, Jesus was selective uh, regarding the time that he spent with other individuals and who they were because of the purpose for which he came. So when we are making decisions, we should remember the purpose for which God has called us. And then the second thing that we talk about today is that Jesus heeded God's word. In other words, he made it a part of his life. He made it a part of his life. It wasn't that he just listened to it and not that he memorized it and knew what it said. And we talked about it this morning. He moved it to his conscience and he lived by it. And so we have a lot of things in our intellect, but everything in our intellect is not in our conscience. It's not until we move God's word over to our conscience. That's when we start living for him. And then in Bible class this morning, we talked about how Jesus considered others. And Jesus is our example. He left us an example. Yes, Jesus loves. He loves other individuals. He loves to provide them with, uh, provide their needs. Uh, yes, he provided their needs. He, uh, 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 he uh, not only provided their needs, uh, they were, he empowered them. He, he empowered them. He empowered individuals. It is like uh, when Jesus uh, uh, healed the blind, you know, that was while, while it restored the sight, it also empowered them. So now the blind man doesn't have to rely on a person to feed them or to give them money. He's empowered now. He can work, he can feed himself, he can provide for himself. Those are the things that Jesus did for other, in, for other individuals. And then he, uh, he rendered, he, he gave them uh, a deliverance from situations in which they were powerless for a positive outcome. So uh, like in Matthew chapter eight, uh, Jesus meets, a leper. The leper has no cure. Leper is a progressive disease. It, it progressively eats away at the body. And there was no cure for leprosy. This man, the only thing that he was experiencing was a slow death. But when he said, Master, have mercy upon me, and Jesus touched him, and he became whole, the leprosy lost him. Jesus gave him a positive outcome when he couldn't provide it himself. So so Jesus did that. But not only did Jesus uh, empower individuals, he, he, he opened the door in a, a hopeless situation. Jesus gave an example of how to live when one is blessed by God. Jesus was a blessing. He was a blessing. And it's amazing in our society, it seems like the more we are blessed, the worse we act. It, it's all, I, I've, I've heard individuals say, I, I can remember the time when we only had one pair of shoes. And we, those were the happiest times of our life. Now we've got a pair of shoes for every day for a month. 
and all for two months. And we act so arrogant. We act so ugly. We we are so uh, sarcastic. Uh, uh, we even selfish. We have more. And uh, even with the economy, uh, individuals saying that the economy is bad, gas is high, and, and so forth. There's very few people that I see rolling down the, the interstate with their windows down. Uh, every, even if you've got a sunroof, even if uh, even if you've got a sunroof, you still have that sunroof closed and you've got the air on. You're driving up. I was at the gas station the other day. And you know, gas is uh, gas is like uh, uh, well, at that time it was over four dollars a gallon. And I was I was pumping my guy, put my card in, and I was pumping the gas, but I was close to the window where the individuals uh, calling were coming up and um, uh, getting gas. And I, I heard one uh, person say, give me $7, $7 uh, worth of unleaded on pump number so-and-so. $7, that's like a gallon and a half of gas. Uh, but you know something? Uh, the individuals will buy $7 worth of gas, which doesn't sound uh, like much at all. But they'll get in their car, roll those windows up, and turn the air on. So even, even though the economy is not the way we want it to be, we're living in more comfort. People are more comfortable uh, now uh, on an average than they were years ago. Uh, I remember looking at a video about how things were in the 1930s, the Great Depression, and how individuals were standing in line to get uh food nothing like nothing like uh, what individuals get today we have the food pantry we have the food the food pantry and uh, people were standing in line to, to to get a grain they weren't getting meat you roll up on the food pantry here and you get chicken uh you you get chicken uh you get meat you get meat you get canned goods, but you get meat. You get corn. But you some, some. It's every type of food that comes through here, and you stand in line. And sometimes the line is long, but we are in line in our cars. We're in line with our windows rolled up and the air conditioner on. Whereas people years ago were standing in line, and they weren't getting meat. They were getting grain, rice, and grits, and cornmeal and beans and, and those kinds of, they were not getting me. So I said all of that to say this, that we are blessed people, even when things are not the way we want them to be, we still are blessed people. And it seems like the better God treats us, the worse we act, the less we want to do for him. We, let's not church, find ways not to serve. Let's not allow excuses to be our conversation when it comes down to serving. Let's take God's blessings and use them as energy to become more proactive. Let's not wait till something happens to say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Let's be proactive in serving the Lord. Let's draw as many people Anybody who wants to, Brother Ron, if somebody wants to work in the pantry, find something for them to do. If it's wiping off the tables, if it's wiping off the walls, get you a list of things to be done. And it's something for everybody to do. Don't ever turn anybody away because the more blessed we are, the less we we'll try to do. And we need to be more proactive in serving God. So, 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 um, so uh, when, when, uh, when, when it comes down to uh, considering others, we should be an example, an example. And when I say an example, this is how we consider of that. And I said this in Bible class this morning. I know that we want things for ourselves. You know, so we talk about uh, uh, looking out for others and so forth, and and we we need we need our we need things for ourselves. So how is it 
that I can be an example to others. I can consider others and not feel guilty about doing something for myself. So here's what Jesus did. He gives us an example. So we, we are an example that individuals can duplicate. When you pay your bills on time, you are an example. And I remember telling y'all about Sister Butler. Sister Butler, she's Sister Beatrice Butler, she's she's passed away now. But I remember Sister Butler had this corn purse. Uh, she had this corn purse, and every time we were going to do something at the church, she would go down in that corn purse. I used to call it the bottomless corn purse, man. She would go down in that corn purse, and she would pull out a hundred dollar bill and say, "Brother Fraser, put this on the ministry." I remember those days. She didn't put it in the collection plate. She, Brother Fraser, come here, put this on the ministry. And that's that's what she would do. That was an example to me. And one day I was uh talking to her, I was visiting with her, and uh and she and sometimes when you visit with people and you get uh, to talking, then you you learn things. And so we got to talk, and I don't know how we got on the subject, but she got to talking about her income. And she told me how much income she got. And then I thought about all those times that she uh, gave me those $100 bills to put on the ministry. And if I told you uh, how much income she had coming in, because she, she was a domestic, in her working days, she was a domestic worker. Uh, she didn't have a... a a, uh, she didn't have uh, a form of education, uh, but she but she was a, she was a domestic worker, and so her income, uh, her retirement income was was uh, very very low, very very low, and and so, but she was an example to me, because she was always clean, she was always neat, she always had something to give, she so she that was I remember that. But, but I remember that example. And uh, uh, those are the kind of examples that you want to duplicate. You, you, all, you, you can always participate. You can always have something to give. You are clean. You are neat. And you're involved and you're engaged. And individuals, don't, that's an example. So when you talk about considering others, you, you don't always give everybody everything that you have in your possession. But there is something you can consider. And Jesus did that. He gave us an example of how to live when one is blessed by God. When you're blessed, and, and, and listen, when you're blessed by God, you don't go, go out. Uh, uh, Jesus doesn't teach us to go out and do uh, crazy things. You know, the Lord bless you with a nice car and you just speeding all over, you violating the speed limit, you, you're reckless and so forth. That's not being blessed. Blessed is when you are able to act so that God can get the glory in your conduct. And then and then the fourth thing that we want to look at is that, that Jesus honored God's will. Jesus honored God's will. Our decisions will always be better when our decisions honor God's will for our lives. In John chapter 8 and verse 28, the Bible says, So Jesus said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. Jesus says, I'm not doing this on my own. I'm doing this by the direction of my father. We've got to get like that, church. We come to worship by God's direction. If, if we worship Sunday morning, Sunday evening, we have no problem with it because we're honoring God's direction. This is the Lord's day. We honor God's direction. Whatever the word of God calls on us to do, we do it. We we do it and we let individuals know, I'm not doing this on my own initiative, but I am doing it as the Father leads me. John chapter 5 and verse 19, the Bible says, therefore Jesus answered and, and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the son also does 
in like manner. Now, Jesus, he's a grown man. And sometimes we'll say, when I get grown, I'll do what I want to do. But Jesus never said that of his father or to his father. He says, the son of man can do nothing of himself. When I get 40 years old, I can't do nothing of myself. When I get 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, 90 years old, as long as the Lord lets me live, I do nothing of myself. I, do, I don't do it unless it is something that the Father wants me to do. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. Uh, there was a time when the little boy wanted to be just like his daddy. Then when he became a teenager, uh, I want to be my own person. And then when he becomes a man, he wants to do things different from his daddy. Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus, when he became a grown man, he said, I'm not going to move without my father. I'm not going to move without him. And that's how we ought to be. If we're going to make good decisions, then we're going to follow the father. And it make, makes perfect sense to follow the, the father. Jesus restricted his decisions to the will of his father. And when Jesus spoke to the people, he spoke what the father wanted them to say. So now, so, so now, so now what are we going to do? When God's will conflicts with what we want to do, God gets tossed to the side. Then when things go bad, we want God to fix it. That's what we do. When God's will conflicts with what we want to do, God gets tossed to the side. So how, how many times have we missed church doing something we wanted to do? I'll go to church next Sunday. I'll go to church Sunday night. When God's will conflicts with what we want to do, God gets tossed to the side. But when something bad happens, we want God to fix it. Okay. Now, now, have you ever told someone, I told you so? How many times do you think God has said that to us? Mm. When Jesus was in the garden, just before he was to be arrested, he was struggling inside because he knew what was going to happen to him. In Matthew 26 and 39, Jesus, the Bible says, and he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Even though carrying out God's will was going to be painful for Jesus, he ultimately told God that he would do as the Father will. Life can be simple, but that does not mean it's easy. A simple principle, honor God's will. Not always an easy principle to carry out, but honor God's will. You'll never go wrong by honoring God's will in your decision making. And then last and finally, Jesus humbly prayed. When you read the Gospels, you find that Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. And when Jesus was going to uh, make one of the most important decisions in his ministry, he spent the whole night in prayer. Read Luke chapter 6, 12 through 13. It was at this time that he went out to the mountain to pray. And he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also named as apostles. Jesus was about to choose the men who would carry out the message of the gospel after he ascended into heaven. This decision would make or break the spreading of the gospel for centuries to come. Going back to the garden, Jesus spent the evening in agonizing prayer over what was about to happen to him. 
So one of the things we need to do in order to make good decisions is we need to spend a lot of time in prayer. Prayer, and then now, now I know, I know that we have a prayer call. I, I want to, uh, we have a prayer call on Friday, and I, I, I want to encourage the membership. If you haven't been coming online on Friday for the prayer call, I know, I, listen, I know that you can pray at home. I know you don't have to get with me to pray. I know you don't have to hear the brothers pray. But the prayer call will help your life. The prayer call helps us to take out some time. To, to 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 take out some time just to talk to God. You're busy. You're busy. Listen, I know about being busy. You're busy. You have things to do. Not only do you have things to do, you need your rest. And so it's it takes some effort to set aside a portion of your day, your week, to talk to God. And if you're not in the practice of doing that, then the prayer call can be your starting place. So, so take some time to pray. But now, also, Jesus spent time in prayer over things he was facing and over things he uh over decisions he had to make and all of the things that he was facing and the decisions he had to make involved doing what god called him to do so you know sometimes uh when we pray you know we 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 we, we Definitely pray for good health. And brothers, I want to encourage you to include this in your prayer. We pray for good health. Jesus spent the night in prayer. And he comes out of prayer in Luke chapter 6. And he chooses 12 disciples. Jesus he spends the whole night in prayer. And then he chooses 12 disciples that's going to carry the gospel. The New Testament is going to be written. Something is going to happen. It, the, 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 the prayer that he's praying, something to glorify God is going to happen as a result of this prayer. So I, I, asked, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, uh, I, I'm having a health issue. I'm, having, I'm, 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 I'm trying to help us now. Because this is Jesus. If, you, if we're going to be successful, we've got to follow Jesus. Lord, I'm having some health issues. And I, I want to serve you. So, so Lord, if you, if you see fit to give me more health, give me deliverance, give me healing over this health issue, then Lord, I want it. I want it because I want to use my health to serve you. We don't say that. We don't say, we don't tell God that we want to use our good health to serve him. And we need to start. We need to start because every moment that Jesus spent in prayer in the garden. When he came out of the garden, he says, nevertheless, let not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus came out of the garden, strengthened to go to the cross. So when we go to God humbly in prayer, we want the doors to be open. We want the healing doors to be open. We want the comfort from grief to be open. But we also have to let God know, Lord, I want to serve you. I want the I want the healing so that I can do your will. 
I want the healing so that I can have behavior that will give uh, uh, someone an example to follow to give you the glory. I want success in high school so that I can be the kind of Christian that will make this world a better place. I want success on my job so that I can have the resources to build your kingdom. We don't add those things to our talk to God. And we need to. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. Prayer is a key that will open many doors for us. So I want, I want to encourage all of us from the pulpit to the back door. Don't wait until after we've made a bad decision to ask God to bless us. Go to him before we make our decision. And seek to want to honor God through doing his will. We make decisions. I'm closing now. We make decisions every day. And if we want our decisions to be good ones, follow the example Jesus gave to us. If you're here this afternoon and you haven't been following that example, and rededicate your life to Jesus by repentance, confession, and prayer. Uh, the Bible teaches us that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. First John 1 and verse number 9. If you're not a Christian, this is a perfect time for you to become a Christian. Believe Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. The blood he shed purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. First Corinthians 15, one through four, Acts 20, verse 28, Mark 16, 15 and 16. Believe that gospel to the point that you will repent. You'll make up in your mind that God is right about everything. Acts 2 and verse 38. Confess Jesus, Acts 8, 37. We'll baptize you for the remission of your sins, Acts 2 and verse 38. The Lord will add you to his church. Acts 2 and verse 47, he'll add you to the church of Christ, Romans 16 and verse 16. This is our opportunity to acknowledge ourselves. If you have a prayer request or uh, a confession to make, you can certainly do so uh, by chat or verbally after we sing the verse, a verse of a song. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore.